surprise, it's 11 o'clock. Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, welcome today to uh, today's um, Color Guard webinar. And today we're gonna to be giving you five tips or tricks for aluminum railing. Um, you know, we pride ourselves obviously on having the easiest to install um, deck railing systems on the planet, on the planet. Um, but there's still a couple of hacks that you can do to make it a little bit easier, make the job flow a little bit smoother. And Kyle here is going to be your guide. Um, now, along the way, you're probably gonna have questions and you can ask those using the chat or the Q&A at any time. Um, and we'll get to those at the end of the presentation. And these tricks and tips today will apply to all of our aluminum uh, lines, which is the Aspen, the Lincoln, and the brand new Grand Prix, which if you haven't seen that yet, check out our website. All right, at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Kyle because he's the guy who knows what he's talking about and I just run the camera. Kyle. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so we're gonna go over some uh, really easy things you can do to um, make your railing installation for aluminum railing go just a little bit smoother. Um, some of them are in the ins installation instructions, but we're gonna review them anyways. Um, but it's all just real, uh, Time saving and uh, and uh, effort saving things that you can do. So I've got a four foot bronze railing section here, and the first thing that I'm going to um, how to lay it out so you get a, a good cut every time. Okay, so first thing I do when I'm installing railing is I've got two two inch support blocks that I cut. Out of wood, you can cut them out of composite, whatever you got laying around on the job site. And I'm going to put those underneath the bottom rail. That's going to give me my spacing. So our aluminum railing works on a two inch only spacing. Okay. Um, you can do other spacing than that, but you'd have to modify the railing, cut down the balusters, etc. So a standard installation is a two inch bottom rail space. Okay. Now that I've done that, We'll just say I've got my, I've got my um, my spacing figured out. I'm gonna go and mark where I need to cut. Okay, I've got the spacing laid. I've got my two inch spacing underneath here figured out. I'm gonna use a square, and I'm gonna mark right along my square. That's gonna give me flush with the post. Okay. Now when I go to cut, I'm gonna cut right on that line. I'm not gonna cut to the side of it. I'm not gonna cut to the inside of it. I'm gonna cut right on that line. That'll give you enough clearance between your posts, assuming they're straight and plumb that you won't hit the post as you're inserting your railing into the opener. Okay. So that's just one simple hack. Um, that'll give you a nice clean mark. And then what I do is I turn it over on my side and then um, I'll use a square and I'll finish it off on the side. To go along with that, um, there's a couple other things you can do that'll give you a nice clean cut and a nice uh, uh, baluster alignment as well. So uh, in our railing sections, the inserts kind of shift around a little bit, right? So what we do is I line it up on the end and then you got some kind of tape. It can be electrical tape. It can be any kind of tape you got laying on the job site. I just happen to have this strapping tape here. I'll take a small piece. And in the center of the section, now obviously if you have longer sections like a 10 footer, you'll wanna do two or three of these throughout the length of the section to help keep it in place. But on a four footer, you only need one right in the center. And I wrap it around and make sure it's snug and tight. And that way my insert isn't gonna move anywhere, okay? You can do that on your top rail also. The insert moves. So we're just gonna take a small piece of tape and just prevent that from moving, okay? Two Once, cents of tape saves you about thousand dollars worth of frustration. Right. You don't wanna have to go back to a dealer and order a new section of railing or order a new insert or anything else because the, um, the insert shifted and, and you cut it wrong, okay? So that's just something really simple that you can do. Um, Moving along with that, once you have that taped, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to 
figure out where my hole spacing is. Okay, so right now you can tell it's really not very even. So I'm just gonna take a tape measure. I've got about four and a half here. And I've got like five and a half here. Okay, so there's a couple things I can do. I can start out by putting one end straight up against the post and see what that spacing turns out to be. That gives me about three. And that gives me about two and a half. Okay, so that's not gonna work. So now I'm gonna do what I call taking a hole out. Okay, we, we talked about this in one of our install videos, but we didn't really, um, didn't really illustrate it completely. So I'm gonna go over that right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this hole and I'm gonna shift it out of view. Okay, now we've got holes here. Again, the spacing isn't very even. So I'm gonna shift it just a little bit and I'll move my blocks so they work along with me here. And we'll just check our spacing out here. So I'm about two and three quarter and two and a half. So I'm gonna split the difference. Okay, so now I'm at about two and five eighths. We'll just double check this side. I might move it just a hair too far. Move it back this way just a little bit. And our holes are evenly spaced now. Okay, so like I mentioned before, I'm gonna take my square, I'm gonna mark my rail. on both sides, up against the post. And I'm sure that I have a square cut. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead while I'm at it and take my square and finish off the line all the way down the rail. Okay, now that I have that done, Another trick that I like to use that'll make sure that you can cut both rails at the same time and it'll make sure that they stay aligned. Um, since I'm taking a baluster out, I'm gonna have a baluster left over from the process, right? So what I do is I cut a little, let me just verify the size, is a two inch, two inch piece of baluster here. Okay. And I'm gonna put that again right in the center. And then I'm gonna take my rail and insert it. And now my mark is right there on both sides. And I'm ready to make my cut. I can cut both rails at the same time. And they're both gonna be the same length. And they will both be the same length. So again, assuming that your balusters are true and plumb, you'll have no issues assembling your railing section and still using your blocks and putting the whole section into your opening like so. Wow, and it installed just like that in four seconds? Just like that. <laughs> we are easy, but not quite that. Not easy. that easy, okay. Okay. And for cutting it, you guys recommend a certain type of blade? Yes, 80 tooth carbide blade. Uh, that'll give you a nice clean, cut without a ton of chips or any any kind of bucking or anything like that. I'll give you a nice smooth bite that right through like a hot knife through butter. All so, right. Um, once you have a cut, you might be worried about maybe nicking up the finish or anything like that. We do have a durable PPG powder coat on here, but um, you know, if, if it comes up against a metal blade, so let's say you bump it on the saw blade or something along those lines, you might have a nick. We do offer, Close on this touch up paint because, as we say in our install videos, chips happen. So, one for each color black, white, bronze. The item numbers are on there too. So, in case you have any questions on what to order for touch up paint, the numbers are right there. And uh, they are color matched right to our PVG powder coat. So, they're a nice clean match. You can do that even if you're, um, as you're installing your screws, maybe get dinged up a little bit, just put a little dab in there. Won't even notice the thing is there. When planning for caps and collars, um, our railing, uh, we, we 
south post line with our railing and our posts are 37, 43 and 49 inches tall, okay? So each one of those heights of posts accommodates the two inch clearance and a 36 inch high rail for, for 37, uh, 43 inch posts accommodates a 42 inch high rail and a 49 inch post accommodates um, any stair installations that you may have, okay? Including our 42 inch stair, all right? So we give plenty of clearance for the caps and in all those cases, um, depending on your installation, every installation is different. You may have to cut the post down to get a, um, to get a little bit better look if you got um, your, your stairs, depending on the angle and things like that with our 49 inch posts. Um, but for a standard installation, straighter stair, our 42, our uh, 37 and 43 um, pair very well with our 36 and 42 inch high railing. Okay. So as long as you're using those two inch spaces underneath there, you can see where I had the previous section from the, from the drink reel episode uh, last time. That's plenty of clearance for your collar with that two inch spacing underneath there. And if you happen to miss the drink reel episode, that is available on our website. Collarguardrailing.com. <laughs> That's right. All right. Um, last but not least, I have a bonus tip. So when you order our posts, they come with a cap and collar inside as long as, as well as the leveling hardware. The only thing they don't come with is the fasteners to monitor your substrate. But the cap and collar come wrapped in a foam like this, okay? Now, even if you don't order our posts, you, you know, maybe you're using existing posts or whatnot, there's always some kind of material around your job site, whether it's the cardboard box, something along those lines that you can use um, when, you're, when you actually go to install our railing. So let's just say I'm ready to install our railing. We got our section set up and I want to start running a screw in. Now with this bracket, you're getting pretty close to the rail here, right? Now everybody's uh, drills and stuff are a little bit different. Everything varies in size and shape and whatnot. But if I'm concerned at all about hitting that bracket or the rail, I'm gonna wrap that foam around and then I'm gonna run my screw in, okay? So that's your bonus tip. Utilizing materials that are ready on your job site without having to purchase you know, some other kind of protective material or anything like that. Just use something that's already existing in our packaging and that'll help save you some extra dings and, and marks on your rail. Yeah, and everybody's got that stuff, that styrofoam sheet stuff lying around. <laughs> We've all ordered packages. Yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to aluminum railing, what's the most difficult part about the installation? The most difficult um, really is laying out your length, especially on a straight section. Okay. So making sure that you got your, your dimensions properly, um, making sure that you got your baluster spacing laid out, like I showed you before. Um, the, the most critical thing. And you, you may not see it until you're done with the install as if you step away and say, look at my finished result. And then your balusters are not centered in the opening. It, they'll, they'll stick out like a sore thumb every day after that. So the most critical and most, to, I guess, difficult, if you want to call it that, part of the installation to me is making sure that your baluster spacing is equal on both sides. Because otherwise, at least for me, I, it sticks out like a sore thumb. I see it all the time. So. Um, not necessarily with our railing, but with, with other installations that I go and see um, they're out in the neighborhood, um, I, I can tell if, if something looks out of whack. So um, to me, that's the most important part. As, as far as the stairs, um, the stairs, the, the most tricky, the trickiest part is uh, locating your brackets on the post. Okay. So again, that just takes a little bit of time and patience. It's, it goes along with laying out where your baluster holes line up. That's going to that's gonna play into that as well. Um, but other than that, we've done with our install videos, with our revision of our instructions, we've done a lot of things to, um, to make our railing as easy to install as we can. Okay. All right. Um, so I know that this isn't in the script, but um, script, <laughs> the piece of paper with some notes on it. Um, the new Grand Prix. Yes. Um, how does that differ from the other product, other aluminum railing? Yeah, so I'm really excited about our Grand Prix. Um, we get a lot of requests for this along with lake houses and stuff like that. So our Aspen railing has, um, I'll, I'll, I'll differentiate all three of the railings. Okay. okay. So our Aspen railing comes in black only, so bronze won't apply to that. But okay. it's going to have this as a bottom rail, and this as a top rail. 
with round balusters. Okay, so instead of the square insert, you'll have round round insert, round balusters. Okay. okay. The Lincoln is what I've got right here, mm -hmm. and that's that's actually that section right there, and that's going to have a bread loaf style top rail, square inserts, square balusters, square bottom rail. Okay. The Grand Prix uses the same bread loaf top rail, same square bottom rail with round inserts, round balusters. I can't tell you how many requests we've gotten for that style of railing on lake houses, houses with a view. Um, the, the round really, um, really, at least in perception wise, allows you a, a better, better look at your view. So you don't look like you're in a, a jail cell or, <laughs> you know, when you're out looking at your lake, you don't want to see your balusters, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to see your rail. You want to see your view, yeah. but you need to be safety cautious or safety conscious as well. So code requires you to have a railing, but we do everything we can to help ensure that you can preserve that view off of your deck and enjoy your outdoor living space. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got some great pictures of it on the website and we are going to have an installation video at some point in time coming, and soon. coming soon. We are shooting some new installation videos today, which is why there's a whole bunch of stuff in the room here. <laughs> so those will be coming very soon as well as one on the new grand prix and that's also you know if you guys doing the road show this summer yes yep. okay the road show actually is just getting started down in tennessee um we just sent one of our trailers down there last week um and the other one will be out on the road shortly um but just so that you're aware grand prix is available it is ready to order and we have it in stock so um it can ship with your distributor order two weeks awesome awesome okay now we're at the point of a q and a uh we don't have anything right now so this is time for you guys to ask your questions and i'm sorry if the screen is getting wonky here but i'm holding a camera in one hand and checking the chat <laughs> in the other um so i'm going to ask just a general question to kind of get things started let's say you've got a you know your typical normal size deck i know there probably isn't one but you know length of the house how long is it going realistically how long is it going to take to put the aluminum railing up Let, let's just say uh let's just say a 10 by 20 deck okay if you haven't installed their product before if you haven't installed aluminum railing before if you're a diy or just doing it on your house for the first time that might take you a good portion of the day okay you take your time you walk through everything you go slow start getting into a rhythm um that, that'll take you a good portion of the day now for somebody that's more experienced you should be able to do it in an afternoon. Five, five or six sections, some posts. Mm -hmm. Granted that your deck is bare and ready to go. Um, you don't have to remove any posts or add anything else. Um, you're just mounting our posts mm -hmm. and, then, and then putting the railing up. You should be done in an afternoon. Okay. All right. And it, can it be mounted to existing posts? Let's say you've got something, but it, it's old. Sure. Yeah. So as long as as long as you're, you have, let's say you have a treated post, it might be checked, but it's still structurally sound. Um, we offer post sleeves, aluminum post sleeves, four by four and six by six. Mm -hmm. This is different lengths. That's vinyl, vinyl, vinyl yeah. yeah, but still. Um, so we do offer two different sizes of post sleeves, two different lengths, 44 and 108. And um, you can you, you can put those over your existing wood posts. Um, if you have a newer wood post, you'll want to use some kind of wrap, like a house wrap or something around that to protect the um, the treated post from the um, from the bare aluminum on the inside of the post. Um, caps and collars are available with those. Um, if you don't have any posts available, you can use our, um, let's say you're using our Aspen, you can do two by two or any of the sizes for Aspen. Uh, Lincoln works with three by three and up, and so does Grand Prix. So we offer a three by three surface mount, which is this post right here. I hit the leveling hardware because this is just for display purposes only, but. Um, Surface mount three by three. And then we also offer those four by four and six by six sleeves. Um, the two by two post is a surface mount as well. And then if you really wanted to, inside of here, we've got Patriot post, mm -hmm. which is structural and it carries up to carries a load up to 500 pounds. And um, you can put a four by four sleeve over that as well. Okay, so if you don't have a wood post available, you can definitely sleep over our Patriot post as well. Yeah. Okay. And that does all the leveling. I mean, yes. we've, we've done the video on this one. Yeah. So most of you might be familiar with it, but um, this has got all the leveling hardware. The only thing it doesn't come with is the screws to attach it to your substrate. 
but you know we've obviously done a couple of videos with this now so don't mind the uh the mess <laughs> yeah don't mind the mess but uh that's one of our number one selling items mm -hmm. single single number one selling items is that structural post it can okay. be used with any of our railing um we offer aluminum sleeves vinyl sleeves stuff like that so um yeah tons of different options for whatever whatever you have going on with your deck uh, we've got pretty much an option to cover almost everything okay all right um so that unless somebody has one quick question which it doesn't look like there are um it covers it all for today so i don't know let's let's take us out um you know let's if you guys have any questions you can always find kyle and kyle's advice on the website colorguardrailing.com yeah. And um, our new catalog is on there for the 2022. New color literature is on there. New uh, new catalog with with all the different uh, new products that we have available uh, is on there as well with pricing with list pricing in it. And um, if you're curious what Grand Prix looks like, uh, there's a section on the website specifically for Grand Prix for Lincoln for Aspen for any of our railing lines. You can see what each of them looks like. Um, use our configurator to see what it would take product wise to set up your deck. And once you submit that, they'll give you list pricing on the back end of that. Um, so there's a lot of different tools you can use to um, configure whatever you're looking for, for your typical or for your particular uh, deck installation. All right. Okay, Kyle, thank you again for, for running this thing. Everybody, you have yourself a great day and we'll talk to you again real soon. Thanks everybody. Bye.